Well, joining me now is former Conservative MP Louise Mensch, here in New York with me, former BBC Head of Ethics Akhil Ahmed, and Times Radio host and former BBC broadcaster John Pienaar. All right, um, John Pienaar, you've been BBC man for so long. What do you make of this? I mean, yesterday it seemed to be a, a squabble over the veracity. Today, this bombshell development of the BBC themselves getting their own separate complaint from a second individual about this star presenter. Where do you see the story going? Well, look, on the basis of what we've seen, and all I know is what we have all, all seen, is it feels like we are at something like a, a tipping point. The situation yesterday, it looked messy enough. It was clearly perilous for the, for the presenter. It was clearly embarrassing uh, for the BBC. And we heard the director general of the BBC saying today um, on, in an interview and at that briefing earlier on that this was damaging to the BBC. Well, how could he say really anything else? We had a situation where allegations had been made. They were disputed. They were disputed firmly, although very, very vaguely, but a conflict of evidence. And now we have something more, just something having something more, I think, begins to take the story into a different, a different dimension. Another young person alleging effectively abusive, abusive conduct, expletive-laden emails in pursuit of a, an attempt to date this young person using a, a dating app. It gets more and more messing and, and reflects more and more, I think, damagingly on the, on the presenter, depending, according to the account that we've seen so far. Stress again. We don't know the ins and outs, we as, as mere onlookers, mm. of what went on here fully behind, behind the scenes. But it begins to feel like a, a tipping point, and who know, knows what comes next. I mean, John, you, you know a lot of senior people at the BBC. What is the mood like there, do you think, uh, amongst other BBC presenters? Is the general mood that this presenter at the centre of this should name himself and, and put this feeding frenzy uh, to bed by actually coming out and talking about it openly as the person? Peers are not there. I'm again going by what I what I see and read, and what I what I read into what I'm seeing and reading, and what I'm seeing and reading this evening again suggests to me that the situation is rather unraveling. When you have Jeremy Vine, who is another nationally nationally known broadcaster, calling publicly on this unnamed presenter to name himself, talking about the BBC being driven, I think the phrase was being driven down to its. Uh, to its knees, um, mm. discussing this in terms of chaos publicly, for goodness sake, on social media. One, one uh, high-profile presenter addressing another anonymous high-profile uh, BBC presenter. The thing is coming apart at the scenes. And that, I think, you can imagine, because I certainly do imagine, is just the tip of, of the iceberg. Although I use the word iceberg ill-advisedly. It's a lot hotter than that, I imagine, at Broadcasting House. Yeah. Louise Mensch, um, I watched or well, listened to Tim Davies' uh, interview on The World at One today, and it sort of it, it asked more questions by the end than we got answers because, you know, he might be in a difficult position here, but the idea that I think that the BBC took seven weeks from the moment when they were first told about these allegations by this family to even alert the presenter to this, allowing him to continue working, but also that Tim Davies still hasn't even talked to this presenter, who's one of the most famous people in the country. What is he waiting for? I mean, that's surely everybody's question. What is he waiting for? Even to be fair to the presenter and to allow him to clear his name, the boss of the corporation should be speaking to him and saying, what is your explanation for this, for these two complaints? I would even dispute from your account that the BBC reached out to this family at all. Mm. A standard email saying we take your complaint seriously is nothing more than a piece of corporate spam. It's not really reaching out. And a call out. that didn't connect. And, they, and a call that didn't connect. Mm. Yeah, right, OK. Your call didn't connect on the and then we hear from the BBC's timeline that their investigation remained open. Well, I'm not Inspector Morse, mm. but I don't know if many people would call it an investigation. When you call the family once, don't get through, mm. and then just give up. No, Is I that right? No, I completely agree. 